So when it comes to AWS, there are around 200 services, but when it comes to interviews or certifications, not all the services are equally important. So there are some key services that you should be very well of. Now, just to understand that, uh, or if you ask any uh, person, or maybe you just give it a thought, you would think that maybe storage is important, maybe, is com maybe compute is more important. Maybe some developer will say Lambda functions are more important because they bring the most of uh, the cloud power. Maybe somebody who is uh, starting in Kubernetes will say, you know, Kubernetes is the most important service. So there are these services, but if you ask me from my own experience and what I have seen, the most important two services that I would suggest are the VPC and the IEM services. So why I call them, I will just classify them into a bit of networking and a bit of identity and access management. Why I say that is, none of the service in cloud works independently. So your compute cannot do anything powerful for you unless it's talking to a storage component and unless it's talking to a database component. So that's how things are uh, designed in cloud. The individually, they are not capable of doing anything, but as a collective thing, they bring a lot of business value. So what most of the interview questions and most of the certification questions will cover is how an EC2 talks to uh, a storage, maybe S3, how an EC2 talks to uh, an RDS. So now when, when we have to connect these services, there are two important services that come into picture. One is that there should be permissions to do those operations. Then comes your identity and access management. And then there should be uh, some sort of networking that ensures that those services are connected to each other. That's where your VPC subnets, those sort of things uh, come into picture. So at very high level, if I say, uh, if your 40% of your time goes in studying VPC, it's uh, networking related uh, uh, concepts like VPC peering or in, uh, the gateways that connect different uh, data center or different uh, accounts or different companies, direct connect. If you're trying to understand those services and 40% of your time goes in uh, understanding VPC, uh, the endpoints and all, and, uh, and IEM, you are still good. Because when, when it comes to later on trying to understand Lambda or EC2, you would be able to relate your concepts very easily. So if you understand that you have to assign a specific role to a service, that's how they get access to the uh, components and then the underlying networking has to be sorted. So once you understand these things, all the other concepts will start looking much more easier and you will be able to understand them. And in some cases, not even just understand them, just, just assume that if it worked this way for EC2 to communicate to some services, pretty much the same way your ECS, your Lambdas, and other services will take. So you can just assume that, yes, if it worked for one service that way, the other services will also follow the similar sort of thing. So, so focus on these two services before you jump on to any storage, compute, lambdas, EKS, ECS, any such complex uh, RDS maybe. Understand how the networking works, how you will ensure two things are going to connect to each other and how those... Uh, permissions are going to be granted to that service to perform the re required operation that you have to do. And now when you start learning, then you will realize that there are number of ways to do these kind of things. The focus should be, which is the best possible answer in those things. Uh, because that's how in your interviews or in certifications, you will be tested. There are different ways. One option, for example, could be you grant administrative permission to anyone you are creating, right? But that's not the solution. Same, some uh, uh, to connect between two services, you could be connecting peering connection and opening uh, every possible uh, subnet or every possible IP range. That's not a good solution, right? That will ensure your connectivity is there, your your POC or that what you are going to achieve is going to look like uh, the way you want, but that's not the right solution. That's that's how you fail. Uh, that's how you you fail despite you have built the solution. 
So it will give you a very false feeling that you have achieved something massively good, but in reality, you have built a solution that is not useful, that's not production ready, that's not customer ready. So that's why I suggest you understand these services in isolation first very quickly, and then try to build a use case where you can build a solution which will integrate these services together and have a mentor, have a, uh, a, a leader or uh, someone who can help you uh, build that solution in a very effective way. It, 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 considering the security, the cost and all other aspects that have you built it the right way was, did you spend a lot of, you know, it's sort of trade off between uh, these different uh, services. So I would suggest uh, focus uh, it with that in mind, and uh, uh, as always, uh, focus on uh, on projects and those sort of things rather than just going through these services in alone. That's why in one of the interview or one of the discussion, I mentioned that uh, uh, that we should be uh, focusing what these zero to hero courses do is that they look at these services in isolation. So you you are doing a zero to hero course. You are spending one day with EC2, one day with so and so and so service. So that at the end of the day, it should be actually called as a zero to aware. So you are just aware about those services. You are not a hero. You are not an expert yet until you build two or three really complex projects, really useful projects, and build it in a very effective way. So you are considering all other aspects of managing that application in the cloud. So well, that's that should be the objective. So if any one of you have done that kind of course, jump onto projects, focus on execution of those projects. That's what I wanted to say for uh, today's uh, session. Thank you. See you some other day.